So once you've identified a maple tree, like this very large silver maple we have, we have to determine how many taps can actually go into the tree. Uh, maple syrup trees can only be tapped if they're 12 inches in diameter or larger. Uh, a tree that's 18 inches or larger can support two taps. A tree that's more than 25 inches can support three taps. We're going to quickly measure the diameter of this tree. Now this is one large silver maple. Uh, it's over 122 inches or a little bit more than 10 feet in circumference. So if we divide that number by pi, which is 3.14, we're going to get a tree that measures about 39 inches in diameter. So this tree can actually support three taps. And out of, you can see we already have a couple of taps in the tree, one here and one here. And because of the, the nice weather we have today, the sap is actually flowing. But we'll show you how to tap a tree real quick. To begin the tapping process, we have a 3 8 inch wood boring drill bit. I'm going to put this in our cordless drill. And we're going to look on this tree. Now you may notice there's a hole right here. We've been tapping this silver maple tree for nearly two decades. So there are different older tap holes on this tree all the way around it. What we want to do is move about six inches above or below this older tap hole and drill a different spot. So what we're going to do, we've got our drill in. We're going to go on an upward angle of about 10 or 15 degrees. We're going to look for a good piece of clean uh, solid bark and we're going to start drilling. So we're drilling on an upward slant of about 10 or 15 degrees to our mark. And you can see there's already moisture in the sap hole, so the tree is already providing some maple sap. Here we have two different metal spiles that we can use, okay? This is a little more old-fashioned one. It's got the uh, sap draw hole on the bottom of it, so when we pound it in, it starts to flow. And this is one made in Canada by Sewell, and this one has the sap hole on the back end of it, and it flows out. Both of these work just fine. So we're going to take one of these. We're going to insert it into our sap hole. And then using our hammer, we're just going to tap it in and snug it up. You don't want to hit this thing too hard. You don't want to crack the wood around the tap hole. Once you feel a solid connection, it's in. Now you can see the sap is already coming out of this metal spile. So what we need to do is just hang our bucket or milk jug or whatever kind of container you have and place a cover over the top. And this will keep all the loose bark in case you have squirrels up above or if you have rain or snow, it'll keep the rain and snow out of the bucket. So you definitely want to have a covered container. Now again, some key points to remember. Find a maple tree, properly identify it. Um, determine the diameter of the tree. It has to be at least 12 inches in diameter for one tap. Uh, it can be at 18 inches in diameter. You can have two taps. And if it is more than 25 inches in diameter, you can have three taps. Okay? Wherever you tap the tree, make sure there are no pesticides or fertilizer because those elements will be drawn up through the roots and into all the sap and it will be part of your maple syrup. So we don't want any of that. Again, collect all of your sap and then once you get enough to uh, to boil down then we'll move on to the next stage okay you can see I made a small change to the sap buckets okay we used to hang them on the handle on our spile but now I've drilled a hole out and we can slip that right over the top of the spile and then once we slip the cover over it we have it completely enclosed no chance of bark getting on the top uh, anything else falling in. So this is a much better solution we came up with.